All right, hopefully, hopefully I could do this right with take three. Uh, let's see how this goes. So what's up, everybody? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another uh, movie review continuing the summer series with The Flamingo Kid, which is, uh, I would say, is one of the more underrated ones that I'm reviewing recently, um, because I don't. To be honest, I really don't hear people talk a whole hell of a lot about this movie. Um, maybe occasionally here and there, but yeah, I really don't hear too much about, at least from other people, about Flamingo Kid. Um, but I, I think this is a great movie, very underrated. It's a classic, definitely a summertime movie, and worthy of, you know, of course, uh, a Blu-ray release and everything. And this looks pretty good on Blu-ray. I watched this actually last night with my brother. And I just kind of noticed how good it looked. Light on the features, unfortunately, sometimes with the Kino Lorber ones. Um, they will release great movies that deserve to be on Blu-ray. But sometimes uh, the features are a little light. Which I will agree with this one. I do wish there were some more features. There is... A film commentary, but I don't think it's anyone involved with the actual movie. But the really cool thing about this one, uh, most of the Kino Lorbers don't have reverse slip or reverse covers. This one does. I guess this was an alternate poster or something. This was the main one that they use, and they also used it for the VHS back in the day. Um, so I guess that this one was some kind of alternate artwork that was used, and they uh, did it as a reversible which is cool. But again, uh, most of the Kino Lorber don't have the reversible artwork. As far as I know, this is the only one that I have with that. But yeah, so Flamingo Kid, a uh, great movie again. Very simple story. Um, it's about Matt Dillon. You know, at this time, Matt Dillon was really big. This was 1984. So this was uh, right after The Outsiders. And then, you know, of course, Matt Dillon would have uh, a lot more success over the coming years. Um, and my brother, it's funny because we were watching this and he goes, what's Matt Dillon up to? I said, he's still acting. Like he's still in movies and TV shows. Like he's still a very familiar face in Hollywood. Um, and he's like, well, anything big? I said, I don't remember like the last big movie or whatever that I saw him in, but you know, he will pop up and stuff from time to time, which is great. But, you know, he had his heyday back in the 80s. So, I mean, you know, he proved his himself. So he doesn't have to do anything big. But, you know, he pops up every now and then, which is great. Um, and this is definitely one of my favorite roles from Matt Dillon. Uh, definitely. But the movie is a story about him. He's this kid that lives in Brooklyn back in the 60s. And, you know, he just graduated high school. He's getting ready to go to college. And it's kind of like his last summer of freedom, basically. And, you know, he gets this job working at the grocery store. But uh, one day, some of his friends from the old neighborhood come along. And they take him out to this beach club where he goes out there, hangs out, plays cards, meets a girl who is played by, uh, I can never remember her damn name. Janet Jones, who is uh, Wayne Gretzky's wife, meets her and, uh, you know, kind of helps a situation with a car out in the in the parking lot and gets a job there. They offer him a job and he works there the rest of the summer again, continues to fall in love with Janet Jones and starts to kind of schmooze with the socialites. Uh, one of them is Richard Crenna, who is a car dealership and he uh, car dealership guy i don't know why i said that car dealer car dealer the guy that deals the cars at the dealership that's what i meant to say damn you brain for not wanting to work today hence why this is take three of this particular video uh it's been a long day um but you know he starts schmoozing with everyone he starts hanging out with richard crenna who gets him bumped up <clears throat> to cabana boy and you know starts telling him about, like, yeah, you know, I'll give you a job at the end of the summer. You can come work with me and blah, blah, blah. So uh, Jeffrey is his name. He gets all these crazy ideas in his head and kind of goes, um, you know, against his 
father's upbringing, who's played by Hector Elizondo, who's this, you know, hardworking, blue-collar dude, you know, and he kind of, you know, gets away from that. He doesn't want to go to school. He just wants to kind of, you know, schmooze with these people and, and make money and everything. And it's just kind of him growing up, basically, you know, trying to figure out what he wants to do, kind of becoming a man a little bit. And, you know, just kind of a collection of, of all these adventures that he goes through through the summer. So, yeah, I mean, really good stuff in this movie. Um, you know, again, like a lot of these older films, you know, kind of like Meatballs and stuff. You know, yeah, there's a story to the film. You know, this one definitely has some more depth to the story than that movie. But it's a basic thing. It's just, you know, this kid spending his last summer of freedom, basically before he goes off to school and just the different adventures and, you know, the friends he makes and then the th situations that he goes through, you know, at this beach club, you know, it's called the El Flamingo. And that's why, you know, hence the name of the movie, the Flamingo Kids. So there you go. Yeah. So good stuff. And this movie does have a very solid cast. Uh, you know, everyone, I thought Matt Dillon did great. Um, you know, again, Richard Crenna, it's weird because, you know, the first movie, well, the first two movies that I remember seeing Richard Crenna, Richard Crenna in was, of course, the Rambo stuff and then Hot Shots. And then it was kind of weird to see him in this movie kind of playing this, you know, snobby socialite and stuff. But hey, you know, that's that's acting. And I always did enjoy Richard Crenna's work. And I do remember when he uh, when he passed away, I was like, oh, man, you know, it's sucks but you know it's part of life you know it's just the way that it goes but you know i thought he did great in this movie i really liked hector elizondo another actor who i've always enjoyed his work uh janet jones who again is uh wayne uh ugh, wayne gretzky's wife i thought she was fine uh fisher stevens is in this movie of course from uh you know the mario brothers movie and, and many other um Leon from Cliffhanger and Cool Runnings, he's in this. This is one of his first movies. John Totoro has a small appearance. Steve James from American Ninja has a small appearance in this movie. Uh, the Barbarian Brothers are in this. So there's quite a few names in this movie, which is really cool. Um, you know, really cool to see, you know, guys like Matt Dillon who were kind of in their prime. Richard Crenna, who had just come off of Rambo, you know, Hector Elizondo, who's been in, you know, a ton of movies over the years. Um, so really cool stuff. And it's actually directed by Gary Marshall, who did, you know, all those fluffy movies like Pretty Woman and Beaches and all that. But, you know, he got to start writing and then eventually directing for Happy Days. So pretty cool stuff. And uh, yeah, you know, and then also the soundtrack is really good. Of course, it's full of you know, great music from the 60s. I do actually have the soundtrack on vinyl. It's not here. It's, of course, packed away in storage. But, yeah, I do have the soundtrack, which is awesome. Um, there's one song on there called Breakaway, which is kind of the theme song to the movie. Um, that's done by Jesse Frederick, who would go on to do the theme songs for Full House, Family Matters, all these, you know, all the great sitcoms that we got in the late 80s and the early 90s. You know, the TGIF stuff. Jesse Frederick did a lot of those theme songs. And uh, he does the main song, Breakaway, in this movie, which is pretty cool. But yeah, you know, again, a very, very solid film. Um, I highly recommend this to anyone that has not seen it. Um you know, you may like it, you may not, but it's a, it's a very solid movie. And again, it, it's on Blu-ray. I was very happy when this Blu-ray came out. I was like, cool, finally, this came out two years ago, but very happy when this got released. I was like, great, because I had uh, an older DVD and, you know, of course, I think it was even in full screen, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Might have been a widescreen, I'm not sure, but... Yeah, this was definitely a very nice upgrade. I do have this on VHS still packed away because uh, I just enjoy the movie that much that I definitely want to hold on to the VHS. Um, also, I almost forgot, Marissa Tomei, this is actually her very first movie. Um, she has, I don't think she has any lines in the film, but you see her and it's, it's you know, obviously, I mean, 
you know, Marissa Tomei is one of the most beautiful women ever, you know, so she's definitely recognizable, but yeah, she has a kind of a background role in the movie towards the end, but you could see her in the film. Uh, so that's pretty cool, but yeah, um, I almost forgot about that, uh, that yeah, Marissa Tomei is also in this movie. Um, but this movie is chock full of great scenes, you know, and the, uh, the music really, it's one of those movies where the music really helps move the movie forward. And, you know, there's like appropriate music to the scenes, which is stuff. And I love, that's one thing I really love about, uh, Martin Scorsese is, you know, the, uh, excuse me, the music of his films are very appropriate to the story, you know, the scenes that he's trying to tell you. Um, you know, it's there, which is awesome. And this is, you know, this movie um, definitely has that, you know, about it. You know, there's definitely music appropriate, you know, to the scenes in this, which is great. And again, it's great soundtrack. I mean, you have stuff like uh, Run Around Sue is on here, of course, Stand By Me, um, Get a, you know, Sha na 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 na, get a job. Um, trying to think of some of the other I, again I should know I mean I just watched this movie last night um again breakaway the theme song is pretty good it plays at the beginning and the end of the movie um green onions is in the film by Booker T and the MGs uh and I, it's just I'm just drawing a blank right now um but there's again a lot of great music in this and again the movie has great scenes I mean it opens up in Brooklyn, you see Matt Dillon kind of just living in the neighborhood, walking around with his buddies. The one dude that plays his buddy in the beginning is actually the guy from Batman Returns that gets his nose bitten by the penguin. Because I mentioned that to my brother, and he goes, really? I said, yeah, that's the dude from Batman Returns. I said, this is this and Batman Returns are the only two movies that I know that he's in. He, I mean, I'm sure he's done you know, some other stuff, but you know, those are the only flicks that I know. And then Fisher Stevens. And the other dude is, uh, shit, what's his name? Uh, his last name is McNamara. He was in Short Circuit and Caddyshack, too. I can't think of his first name. Uh, I'm gonna just going to look it up because it's, it's bothering me. But, you know, I hate using my phone during my videos. I really do. But sometimes, you know, you kind of need that extra, extra uh, source, you know what I mean, to see what uh what you're trying to discuss but i i just looked it up i should know this but um Brian McNamara yeah he, again he was in short circuit so they pull up they go out to the beach club they're playing cards and one of the dudes that they play cards with is actually Bronson Pinchot from the TV series Perfect Strangers Beverly Hills Cop all this other stuff so yeah one of his first you know, well, this was the same year as Beverly Hills Cop, so, you know, when he was first starting in the movies and stuff, which is cool. And you find out, you know, Jeffrey's like this really good card player. He's like kind of like this math wizard. He can figure things out. So kind of his talents are revealed, which come into play later in the movie. He meets Janet Jones. They kind of start falling for each other. You know, he helps out at the, at the parking lot and gets a job so he starts working there and uh no the the job that is, i forgot the job that his dad sets him up with it's like an office boy i forgot about that i don't know why i said grocery store but uh, his buddies work there so yeah I, I forgot about that and yeah you know the rest of the movie there's like an initiation scene where they got to jump in the into the ocean um you know just him kind of schmoozing with everybody him trying to eat at the catering table and he's like having difficulties and people are getting mad at him um there's a scene where they go to the racetrack and they lose and they get into a fight with john totoro and his gang um you know just good stuff and then him you know trying to you know schmooze up to richard Crenna, who tells him all these great things and then at the end, he's like, well, no, like, you're going to be a stock boy first and work your way up. And, you know, he realizes he's been kind of duped the whole time. And then the Richard Crenna's character is a really good card player as well. So the movie ends with Jeffrey sitting in for this guy and, you know, they beat 
Richard Crenna, who's undefeated and, you know, kind of, you know, break the, the tradition, so to speak. And he kind of shows him up a bit, which is cool. And then he goes back to his family and tells him, look, I'm sorry. You know, we're, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to do the right thing. And there you go. So, yeah, I mean, again, this is just a solid film, in my opinion. And I don't know why more people don't talk about this. I really don't. Um, this is one of those movies that my dad introduced me to. He found the, the VHS somewhere and I just kind of grew up watching it and then, you know, picking it up on DVD and then eventually this Blu-ray, you know, so yeah, it's just one of those movies, you know, it just, somebody introduces it to you and you really like it. You kind of go from there, you know, it's definitely a solid summer movie in my opinion, definitely a classic. And this was also the very first movie to get the PG-13 rating. It was not the first movie released with the PG-13 because it got pushed back for whatever reason. I couldn't find the reason why online. But it was the first movie to actually get the PG-13 rating. It just came out later. I think Red Dawn is the first movie to be released with the PG-13 rating. So there you go. But yeah, this is actually the first ever PG-13 movie. So that's pretty cool, too. You know, definitely some really cool uh, facts, you know, in, in there. So there you go. But yeah, at the end of the day, again, it's a solid movie. Um, if you haven't seen it, check it out. You might like it. If you haven't seen it in a while, give it another look. You know, it's definitely one of those movies that um, is worth watching multiple times, at least in my opinion. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of The Flamingo Kid. Next, you know, since it is baseball season and we're kind of at the tail end of that, well, kind of halfway, I guess, we still have all of August and September to go, um, I'm going to go ahead and review some baseball movies, starting with, of course, The Sandlot, and I will review the whole Sandlot trilogy, you know, you might as well, and then I'll do Rookie of the Year, Little Big League, and Summer Catch, I think those will be good so look forward to some baseball movies coming up next and again thank you guys for watching as always take care and i'll talk to you guys later see i can't talk at least i screwed up at the end of the video talk to you guys later see you